Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 463 episodes made, broadcast on CBS Radio from 1942 to 1955, we bring to you The Whistler. Wait a minute. Have you heard the strange tales of The Whistler? to accept the responsibility of the failure of our marriage. I know who caused it, and I know who she is. I refuse to give you up to her. And so, I have made a decision. Another Sunday night, and again, CBS presents The Whistler. The whistler know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the unusual story of the other woman. Olivia Martin paces the floor of her bedroom. She's been pacing for hours, and it is now long past midnight. Her husband, Fred Martin, did not come home to dinner. He was detained at his office on business, so he said. But Olivia knows that it isn't his advertising business that detains him. And she knows, too, that tonight will be the climax and the final crash of their marriage. The end of everything for Olivia. She knows what Fred is going to say tonight. For months she has been fearful of this moment. And now it has come. Olivia, you awake? Yes, come in. I thought you might be asleep. How could I sleep? You know better than that. It's one o'clock, isn't it? Yes, sir. I didn't realize it was that late. You don't usually bother to see if I'm awake. Don't I? For the past two months, you passed right on to your own room. Yes. Yes, I guess I have. Get your business settled? Yes. Yes, I have quite a bit to attend to. Have dinner at the club? Hmm? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Then, why didn't you answer my call? I had you paged. They said you hadn't been there this evening. Oh? Perhaps I hadn't arrived yet. Really? What did you want? I... I don't know. I... I don't remember now what I called you for. I see. Well, I... think I'll turn in. Good night, Olivia. Why don't you say it? Say what? What you came here to say. Don't you think I had anything particular to say? I know. I don't know how, but... I've known all evening you were planning to tell me something when you got in. Oh, that's nonsense. No, Fred. I've known for months this was coming. I know what sort of business detained you. Another woman. What? First, I believed you. As the weeks passed and I realized you were going colder, the whole thing became clear to me. Then I knew you were evading me. That you were lying about those business appointments at night. Go on. We've been married ten years, Fred. I've done everything humanly possible to make our marriage a success. Have you? I think I have. At least I've tried. That's your opinion, Olivia. Why didn't you come right out and tell me about this woman at the very beginning? Why should I? Oh, Fred. <laughs> Sick over. I've tried not to believe it. Now, let's not have a scene, Olivia. <laughs> Would you expect me to do that at all? No, not you, <laughs> Olivia. Certainly not you. I suppose you'll say it's all my fault. I'm to blame for everything. It's... Well, isn't that what you're trying to say? I haven't said anything. Then why don't you? Say something. Why do you beat about the bush? You came here to say something. Say it. Very well, since you put it that way, I will. I'm going out of town tomorrow on business. I'm sending my things to the club. When I return, I intend to live there. Wait, Wait a minute, Olivia. I haven't finished yet. I want you to get a divorce on any grounds you please. Desertion or whatever you wish. Divorce? Do you mean that? I do. 
Very well. That's the way you want it. There's nothing else I can do. No, Olivia, nothing. Good night. So Olivia sobs herself to sleep. When morning comes, she finds Fred gone and his things already sent to the club. All day, she wanders aimlessly about the house like a lost soul. Then as night falls and her loneliness increases, she is seized with a horrible feeling of hopelessness. A strange depression comes over her, and she sits down at the desk and writes a note. Fred, the very thought of losing you, the thought of divorce, the thought of giving you up for another woman is more than I can bear. The shame, the disgrace, the scandal of it all would, I know, drive me insane. Regardless of what you may think, I refuse to accept the responsibility of the savior of our marriage. I know who caused it, and I know who she is. You'd never be happy with a woman of her type. You'd be throwing your life away. I refuse to give you up to her. And so, I have made a decision. Goodbye, Fred. Olivia. Olivia addresses the note to Fred at his club. Steps out and drops it in the nearest mailbox. She wanders about for a while. Then returns to the empty house, takes some sleeping tablets, and goes to bed. Then, the next morning at Fred's office, Doris, Fred's private secretary, is going over some papers. Yes? Very well, put him on. Hello? Yes, Mr. Goldberg, this is Doris Hammond. Mr. Martin's out of town for a few days. Yes. Well, Miss Bartow is head of the art department. I'll have her check on it right away. Yes. Yes, goodbye. Yes? Tell Rita Bartow to come in here, please. Miss Bartow isn't coming in today. She's staying home. Has a bad cold. Oh, I see. Well, we'll send Jack Mallory in then. Yes, Miss Hammond. You want to see me, Miss Hammond? Oh, yes, Jack. I understand Rita's ill isn't coming in today. No, I guess not. Well, Mr. Goldberg over at Lake Laboratories wants to know which ad she intended to run next week. Only Rita knows about that. Perhaps we'd better send them over to Rita's apartment and have her select the one she wants to use. Very well. Who shall I send? <laughs> well, I don't know of anyone who'd rather go on that errand than you, Jack. Well, I'll go if you insist. I don't think I have to insist, especially where Rita's concerned. All right. I'll run over there. I thought you would. Thanks, Doris. See you later. Rita, this is Doris Hammond. Yes, Doris. How do you feel? Oh, fair. Good. Mr. Goldberg wants to know which ad you selected for next week. I'm sending Jack Mallory over with the layout. He should be there in a short while. Very well. I've forgotten which it was. And send Jack back as soon as possible. He'll hang around all day if you don't. I will. Don't worry. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. How do you feel? Oh, all right. Just didn't feel like coming to the office today. I thought you had a bad cold. No, not too bad. I'll be all right tomorrow. Mr. Goldberg wants you to select a layout for next week. Here they are. Which do you want? Well, uh, I planned on this one. But I think you should make this section in red. Oh, I see. That's easy. I'll fix it up in a jiffy. Stands out better this way. We'll use this one for the week following. Okay. You look mighty lovely, Rita. Thanks. Where were you going, all dressed up? Well, I've got to go out of town this afternoon on that uh, Henderson deal. I wanted to put it off until next week, but Mr. Martin insisted that I get it settled as soon as possible. I'll be back on the afternoon plane tomorrow. You shouldn't be running around too much, darling. Well, I don't really have a cold. That's fine. You've had a lot of trouble with that in the past year or so. Yes. There's nothing much can be done about it, I guess. Thank heavens it only strikes me in winter. Why don't you try a change of climate, Rita? Change of climate? <laughs> I should think you'd like California. I've always wanted to go there. I've had an idea that I could do very well. Nice jobs in the movie art department. I'm not interested in movies. I thought about going out there and settling down. Buying a nice little home and 
really enjoying life. Well, why should a bachelor do all that? You have ideas about getting married, Jack? Yes. Yes, I have for you. Good. I'm glad to hear it. What time does your plane leave? At two. How about a little lunch while you're waiting? Something warm. Very well. well. Leave your bag here. We'll pick it up later. All right. I've got something important to talk to you about, Rita. Important? Yeah. I, I got a nice raise this week. That's fine, Jack. I want to ask you a question about you and me. Yes? Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, not now. Come on, we'll talk about it during lunch. Meanwhile, Olivia Martin, having made a decision and formulated a plan, visits her husband's office and calls on Doris, the secretary. Good afternoon, Miss Hammond. Oh, how, how do you do, Mrs. Martin? I was just going out to lunch. Would you join me? I'm sorry, Miss Hammond. I'm afraid I haven't time. I'm in rather a hurry. I have a number of things to do this afternoon. Can I help you? I suppose you're quite busy yourself. Oh, yes, my work is always double when Fred leaves town. Fred? Uh, yes, Mr. Martin. Oh, my husband. I suppose it does seem strange for an employee to call him Fred. But for some reason, I've gotten into the habit and can't seem to break it. He doesn't seem to mind, however. That's so. I can imagine he wouldn't. After all, you're like, well, like one of the family, aren't you, Miss Hammond? <laughs> yes, I've been here for two years. You've been Fred's private secretary for how long now? Almost a year. It doesn't seem that long. Pleasant work, isn't it? Most interesting. You've no idea how absorbing this business can be, Mrs. Martin. <laughs> but I realize it must have a certain amount of extremely interesting moments. <sighs> you should come around more often, Mrs. Martin. <laughs> how right you are. Things might have been different. Different? Yes. I mean, if I had taken an active interest in the business, well, at times it gets rather dull waiting at home, especially on long evenings when your husband has to stay in town on business. Oh, I suppose it is rather dull under those conditions. Yeah. But I mustn't take up your time with personal problems. I want you to have a check drawn for me for $500. Very well, I'll attend to it at once. Um, have you heard from Fred since you left? No, I haven't. He phoned me this morning. You did? Yes. He left an important paper at home, and he knew I was flying to Detroit tonight to visit my relatives, so he wants me to drop it off for him at Buffalo. Buffalo? I thought he was in Boston. Well, he, yes, he, he was, but he had to rush over to Buffalo. Some unexpected business came up, and he says he needs you very badly. He wants me to come to Buffalo? Yes, I told him I'd notify you and bring you with me. I'll be leaving the airport about 5.30. Can you meet me there, or shall I pick you up here? Well... Well, I'll meet you at the airport. I'll have to run home for a few minutes. Is there anything in particular he wants me to bring? No. Nothing but the paper he left at home. Very well. I'll be at the airport around five. Do you mind flying with him? No, not at all. <laughs> Good. I play it as a small cabin job. Might be a little bumpy, but I'm rather a good pilot. I'll see you at five. Shortly after noon, rain begins to fall. Round two, the storm becomes heavier. Then Jack returns. Jack Mallory, where on earth have you been? Do you know what time it is? Yes, I'm sorry. I got to talking and didn't realize the hour. Well, what about the layout? Did Rita select one? Yeah, this one. She made a couple of changes in it. So? What change? Oh, nothing important. Just wanted this section set up in red. Stands out better. Hmm. Yes, so it does. Well, it... I'd better put it through right away. I I'm sorry to have been so late with it. I'm glad you got back with it before I left. Left? Where were you going? Mr. Martin phoned. He wants me to join him in Buffalo. Something important has come up. Buffalo? Mm -hmm. I thought he was in Boston. He had to run over there in a hurry. Buffalo? Huh? Hmm. Strange. What's strange? Huh? Oh, oh, well, I mean his being in Buffalo. What's strange about it? Oh, I don't know. I suppose he could be in Buffalo. Well, what's the matter with you, Jack? Why, oh, nothing, nothing at all. Here, lean over here. What? Why? Well, a little closer. What? Hmm. What's the matter? Well, of all things, now I've seen everything. You've actually had a drink. You of all people. Well, I, I don't approve of it as a rule, but I walked back from Rita's place and. 
I got my feet a little wet in the rain. Felt kind of chilly. I was afraid I was catching cold, so I dropped in at a bar on the way back and had a drink. Oh, I hope you don't get sick. Can't afford to have you and Rita both out. Oh, well, that's right. A lot of work to be done this week. Here, take off that top coat. It's, it's damp. Let me have it. No, hang it over the radiator. Well. What's wrong? How on earth did you do this? You spilled ink on the front of your coat. Yes. Well, what do you know? Fine thing. I just got it yesterday. I must have done that over at Rita's when I, I blocked that section in red. You'll get it out as soon as possible. Uh, hand me a towel from that closet and dampen it. Oh, don't bother, Doris. I'll have it clean tomorrow. Get some of it out now. Thanks. Oh. Certainly hard to get off. Well, it's probably dried in by now. The cleaners can get it out. Strangest ink I ever saw. Doesn't seem to be ink. More like blood, if you ask me. Blood? Let me see. Hmm. It is strange. Let me see that layout. It does seem a little darker than this on the card. Maybe the cloth has something to do with it. Perhaps. Better let the cleaners worry about it. What time are you leaving, Doris? Uh, in a few minutes. I'm flying from the airport around five. Well, good luck, Doris. See you in a few days. Thanks, Jack. Take care of yourself. And uh, lay off the liquor. That's bad stuff to get started on. Are you kidding? What do you think? (laughs) (laughs) For a few brief moments, Dora stands staring after Jack as he passes through the door to the outer office. Then she picks up the towel, studies it for a moment. Suddenly she tosses it into the desk drawer, leaves the office and goes home. Then around five, Doris meets Olivia at the airport. Oh, Mrs. Martin, do you think we should try it tonight? You mean you'd rather not go? Are you frightened? Oh, no. No, not exactly frightened. But... Well, the storm's passed. What's wrong? What? Oh, I, uh, I don't really know. Nothing, I guess. <laughs> well, nothing to worry about. I've flown this plane in all kinds of weather. Yes, of course. Well, we're all set. Let's climb in. I wish I could have talked to Fred. I haven't the slightest idea what this is all about. You'll know what it's all about. In no time at all. What? We'll get there in a couple of hours. Don't worry. How far have we come now? Oh, I don't know. About 75 miles, I should say. Where are we? I can't see a thing. We're not far from Monticello. How can you tell? Can can you see that down there? No, not too well. I'm flying by instrument. I hope we don't run into a storm. Frankly, I don't like to be in a plane during a storm. Well, I don't know of anyone who really does. We could have taken a train. We could have. But on this particular trip, I was in somewhat of a hurry to get to my destination. Tell me, Doris. Uh, may I call you, Doris? Well, of course. Aren't you just a bit upset over this trip? What do you mean? Just that. Do I seem upset? Yes, you do. Something playing on your mind? Yes. Yes, there is something bothering me. So? What is it? It's rather not safe. A guilty conscience? Guilty conscience? Isn't that what it is? What are you talking about? Are you looking forward to a nice visit in Buffalo? Why, I... I don't know. I don't consider it a visit. It's part of my job. And a very pleasant job, too. I'm sure you'll miss the job and its attendant interest. Working late at night, several nights a week with Fred. What do you mean by that? Why should I lose my job? Your job isn't all you're going to lose. Do you know what you're saying? Yes, and you know what I'm talking about. You're crazy. Fred isn't in Buffalo. Where is he? I don't know. But wherever he is, you'll never see him again, you little cheat. Put this plane down and let me out. You're mad. I'm going to put it down straight down and it's no. What? Fred won't think you're so attractive next time he sees you. No. No, you're out of your mind. You can't do this. You can't. You can't. Put that key back in the switch. I want you hear me? I want you. Must give me that key. Pull up. The screen. Pull up. By some strange quirk of fate, Olivia is foiled in her plan of suicide and murder. 
A farmer rushes to the crash, finds Olivia thrown clear and still alive. Now, an hour later in the farmhouse... Uh, oh. I am. How do you feel, man? What? Why? Who are you? I'm Doc Sanders. Doctor? Where, where am I? You're on Jake Barrett's farm. Found you right after the crash. Believe me, you're mighty lucky. Lucky? What do you mean? Well, you were thrown clear when you hit the treetops. Got off with a few scratches and a couple of rattling good bumps, but not a busted bone any place. Where? What happened to my passenger? Well, uh, I'm sorry to say she, she's dead. Dead? She's dead? She wasn't as lucky as you. I... I'm lucky, am I? Don't you think so? No. No, I don't. I, I'm not lucky. That, that isn't the way. Oh, no, no, no. Take it easy. I know how you feel, but you couldn't help it, ma'am. These things just happen sometimes. No. No, they don't just... What were you going to say, ma'am? Nothing. I... I wasn't going to say anything. Oh. Well, they located your husband, ma'am. Jake's driving you back to New York tonight. Now, you'll be all right. Well, Olivia, now you are on the spot. Your vicious plan was only partly successful. Now you've got the face spread. And how are you going to explain the situation? How are you going to explain Doris's presence in your plane? Fred arrives in town... Spends a few hours at his club. Then in the morning, he visits Olivia. Hello, Olivia. Oh, Fred. It was terrible. Yes, I know. I'm very sorry, Olivia. I, I don't know what happened. But all of a sudden, the motor cut off. I, I couldn't find a clear spot any place. I thought I saw a clearing, but it was more trees. And with no motor, I couldn't pull up. You were very fortunate. Yes, I suppose so. Where were you going? Why, well... After you left, I, I got to thinking things over, and I just couldn't remain another night in this house alone. So I decided to, to go to my sister's in Detroit for a while. Mm-hmm. Why did you cry? I, I don't know. I, I just wanted to get away as fast as possible. Wasn't it a rather bad night for flying? No, I've flown in worse weather. Storm had cleared. I see. I was never so shocked in my life. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Oh, dear. No, 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 no. Get hold of it. You couldn't help it. It was just one of those things. I know how you feel. Doris was a... Well, she was a lovely girl. She was shameless. Yes. She was young. Had everything to live for. I know how you must feel, Fred. Yes, I'll certainly miss her. Can you ever forgive me, Fred? Why, of course, Olivia. I, I never want to fly a plane again, never. Now tell me, uh, how did Doris happen to be with you? Where was she going? Why, I, I... Well, she said she wanted to visit some friend in Buffalo. Asked me if I'd drop her off there. How did she know you were flying that way? Well, you see, I I went to your office and told her I was going to Detroit and asked her to draw some money for me. Told her I'd be glad to put her down in Buffalo that that's all. I can't imagine why she'd leave the office in the middle of the week to visit friends out of town. That wasn't like Dora. Maybe she had some business to attend to on the side. Maybe. Well, I can't imagine what it might be. Maybe. Maybe it was personal business. Possibly. Olivia, are you telling me the truth? Why? What do you mean? Have you told me the real reason you wanted to leave town? Well, certainly. Weren't you, well, running from something? Well, what would I be running from? You were carrying out a plan, weren't you? Plan? What plan? Didn't you have a definite idea in mind when you wrote that note to me? Note? Note? It seems you've forgotten the note. Why don't you tell me the truth, Olivia? Yes. Yes, I, I did make up my mind to to do something terrible. I, I was going to kill her and myself. I couldn't stand it any longer. But after I mailed it to you, I, I seemed to come to my senses. I, I saw things clearly. Realized how awful such a thing would be. I, I just couldn't go through with so it. So you decided to forget the idea and go on to Detroit? Yes. I swear I changed my mind about killing her. I couldn't be a murderer. Do you really expect me to believe that? Fred, you must believe me. You must, please. I know what you think. The note and everything that's happened. That note is certainly definite evidence against the you. Note. Yes. Oh, Fred, I swear I didn't. That's easy to say, but the 
The note is too convincing. Where is the note? You must destroy it. Don't tell anyone about it, please, Fred. What time was it when you visited my office? Oh, I don't know. About noon, I think. And you mailed the note the night before? Yes. And you made up your mind to leave town. You went to the office, told Doris about it, and left at five. Yes, yes, that's right. And what did you do in the meantime? Oh, I... I can't remember. I, I'm so confused. I, 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 I went shopping for a while. Are you sure? I don't know. I, I don't know. But I swear I changed my plan by the time morning came. You're going to have a hard time proving all this. It's the truth. Why shouldn't they believe the truth? The circumstances all tie in too well. We had separated the day before. I moved to the club. Several people knew about that. And in the note, you said you knew who the other woman was. And stated clearly what you intended to do about it. I know. I know. Then how else can the police look at it? Police? What do they know about it? They've been putting two and two together. But the note... How do they know what's in the note? They were waiting for me when I got back from Boston. They had already found the note. They showed it to me. That's where you made your big mistake, Olivia. Fred, they really think I killed her? Murdered her? They do. What what are they going to do? The detectives are here now. They want to talk with you. Detectives? Yes. Yes, I'll be calm. Very well. I'll come in and get the note. Thank you. Olivia, this is Captain Evans. And this is Lieutenant Davis. How do you do? Good morning, Mrs. Martin. Did, uh, did you gentlemen wish to see me? Yes. would like to ask you a few questions. Yes. Yes, of course. But I haven't done anything. I'm absolutely innocent. I... Yes, I know, Mrs. Martin. We don't want to upset you. Just answer a few questions. Very well. Is it true that your husband left you a few days ago with the idea that you were to get a divorce? Yes. He took up residence at his club? Yes. You believe that your husband was in love with another woman? I did. Did you know who that woman was? I... I did. Did you object to his leaving you, getting a divorce? Yes. Yes, I did. Well, after he left you, did you write this note to him? Yes, yes, I... I wrote it, but I... I... You mailed it to his club? Yes. Next day, you got some money at his office about noon, and exactly five o'clock, you took off in your plane. Yes, but I... I changed my mind... I couldn't go through with it, and I didn't. I swear I didn't. Where were you, Mrs. Martin, between noon and five o'clock? I went about town. I I did a little shopping. I don't remember what else I did. Can you prove where you were during that period? No, I don't see how I could. No one was with you during that time. Did you frequent any establishment where you were known? No, no, I didn't. I, I saw no one I knew. Are you sure, Olivia? I'm, I'm positive. What difference does it make where I was between noon and five o'clock? It makes a lot of difference. Because it was about that hour that Rita Barto was stabbed to death in her apartment. Rita Barto? The head of the art department? That's right. The weapon's not been found, and there were no clues to the identity of the murderer, excepting your note to your husband. But, but Rita Barto? What have I to do with her? You said in your note here that you knew who the woman was. Rita Barto was the other woman. What? Then... Then what about... What about who? What were you going to say? Nothing. I wasn't going to say anything. Not one thing. Oh, yes, you were, Olivia. Yes, you were. You were going to say that you killed the wrong woman. Poor, innocent Doris Hammond. Of course, we know you didn't kill Rita Barto. Because Jack Mallory killed her when she turned him down and said she was going to marry Fred Martin. And Doris was the only one who knew about the blood stains on Jack's coat. She was the only one who could have pinned it on Jack and cleared you, Olivia. But Doris is dead now, and you killed her. Killed the very one who could have saved you. What a shame. <laughs> has presented The Whistler. Next week, same time. I, The Whistler, will return to tell you another unusual tale. Good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. That concludes today's episode.
We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.